All right, what we're gonna talk about today is creating a runner. I made this runner the other night very quickly from this panel. This is one of those panels where the things are all different sizes. They're different heights, different sizes. What do I wanna do with that? People tend to take the whole panel and do something with it. I don't always like to do that. I like to take pieces. I might use something. I might take this piece and make a zippy pouch. Just a real cute little, little pouch that I can use during the holiday season. I might use some of it to make hot pads, placemats and runners, obviously. But what I wanted to do with this was just take a couple of the odd shaped blocks and put it into a runner. And one of the um, fabrics that went with it was just this um, gray and black plaid, which I thought worked cute with it. And then I picked a black crackle. And you're gonna say, where's the pattern? There is no pattern. And I'm not gonna make a pattern. I'm gonna show you how to do it. This was based on the size of my blocks and what I wanted to do. I like to make pat, um, excuse me, make runners that nobody else has. And I've got fabric that you don't have in my stash. You have things that I don't have. We all have leftover blocks. We all have different colors that we like. So how can I just make a simple runner out of some stuff that I like? And that's what I'm gonna talk about today. We are going to just use fusible batting, no pattern, and one of the things I don't like when I'm watching videos is a lot of times, and we hear it in the shop here too, will you just, well, you just take this and do that and do that. But that was eight steps and I don't get, will you just. It's sort of like, yeah, well, you just go to grandma's house and eat a Thanksgiving dinner. The turkey just appears. Yeah, not quite. But in this case, will you just is very, very simple. There's just a couple steps and I'm gonna walk you through what those are. I start with a piece of fusible batting. And I just cut a chunk off the bolt. And I decide how big I want my runner. This comes off the bolt, folded in half, it's double width. So if this is usually about 42 inches wide, if I do it right at 42, some fabric isn't quite that wide and so I have to do a second piece of fabric for my backing. So what I tend to do is trim it down just a little. So I'll make my runner 12, 13, 14, whatever size I like on my table. And I'll make the length about 40 or 41. And that way I can use just a half yard of fabric, a width of fabric for my backing. This is fusible batting, bumpy on one side, that's the fusible side. That gets ironed to the back of your backing fabric. But my finished runner, is whatever size I make this. So if I want a runner that's six by 16, that's how big a piece I cut. This one is 13 by 40. No magic, it's just a good width. I have a buffet at home that's 15 or 16 inches wide. And so a 13 inch runner is perfect and 40 inches is a good length. I take that and then I'm gonna set this this way for just one second because this is how I just trimmed it. When I cut, I always, you hear me say, this is my favorite ruler. This is a 20 and a half inch square up ruler. There is a video on the Daily Dose page on how to use a square up ruler. But one corner will have number one through 20 and across here, one through 20. The other corners are odd numbers. If you're right-handed, that one one is always gonna be in your top right-hand corner. If you're left-handed, it's gonna be on the left. So if I roll this off the bolt, I can, I'm actually gonna be going this way, I can count 13 inches, there's my one one, 13 inches, I cut, I just, just I say, slide the ruler here and cut. So that is my 13 by 40 inch piece. And then, because I don't like to waste my time cutting precisely, when it really doesn't matter. I take my backing piece. This is just a piece of fabric rolled off the bolt. And I could cut it to exactly 13 by 40, but I really don't need to. All I'm gonna do is just lay it right on here. I'm gonna leave myself just a little space and I'm gonna grab my rotary cutter and I'm gonna just cut right down here. So I've got a little bit of what I like to call slop factor 
It doesn't have to be exactly that size. When I'm done with my runner, then I can trim it. But I don't waste my time cutting this perfect, cutting that perfect, cutting that perfect. I'm just ready to go. I grab my batting and I grab my backing. And then you just, getting the, getting the just of it all, this is my fusible batting, bumpy side to the back of my background, and I press. I take my little iron and I press and press, and you can use a big iron, but long enough, just press and press. That will fuse the batting to the back of my runner. So you see I've got a little bit of room on either side, and this is the back of my runner ready to go. Now I'm going to create the top of my runner. On this one, I cut out these two squares. They were 11 inches wide. Okay? I took this piece of fabric and I cut an 11 inch strip. I plunked the plaid in the middle and I stuck the bird at either end. Okay? This one I'm going to play with a little bit. I always give myself a marking, even when I do something as simple as this. I'll take my ruler. This is a Creative Grids ruler. Um, if you're not familiar with these, they're really nice. One way, the numbers are in white, one through eight this way. The other way, they are at this end. Where am I here? The black is half inch markings, one and a half, two and a half, three and a half. Okay? So this piece is 13 inches wide. I want to mark a center line. So I need six and a half inches in from my batting. So I take my ruler and I take, I'm looking at my black numbers here. Six and a half line is right here. I'm going to line that up with the edge of my batting and I'm going to grab a marking tool. Here I'm going to just use a pencil and I'm going to drag it along there. And you can see that line, I hope, Tina? Yes, we can. And I don't know if you noticed you don't want to try to write with a pencil on batting. It, the point of the pencil sticks into the batting. If you noticed, I held it like this and I dragged it. Dragged it? Is that a word? Drug it? Dragged it? So there's my pencil line. That is the center point of my runner. Okay. And I'm going to just grab a few of these to play with. This is just some batik fabric. And I cut a piece that is eight and a half inches wide. Why eight and a half inches wide? Um, because it's really convenient because this ruler is eight and a half inches wide. So I just took a piece and cut it eight and a half inches wide. We and are having technical difficulties. The, uh, the screen won't go back to small. Give me one second here and I'll come around and It's magic. Is that good? Thank you. She obviously has the magic touch. Okay. So I, everybody see me okay? All right. So here's my eight and a half inch piece. And I could mark this with a marker, but all I'm going to do is do it the fast and easy way and just fold it in half. That's going to give me a center crease. And when I open this up, I'm going to line that center crease right on my pencil line. Okay. And I'm going to get that centered. And so what do I want my runner to be? I like that in the middle. And then I have some different fabrics here. Let's take this little guy. This polka dot one is kind of fun. And I'm just thinking about what I might want to do. Maybe I'll put a piece of that polka dot at each end. And I could do a strip the whole length like I did here. And I could have something as simple as three strips. But I might want to play a little bit. I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to cut this in half. And again, I'm just grabbing a scissors and I'm cutting this on the fold. I can make these any size or shape that I want to. And what I'm thinking is I'm going to, again, fold this in half just to get my center line. And yes, I should measure this way and get a center point also. I'm not going to waste your time doing that, but I'm going to mark my center. 
And now I can line up that fold right there. And I can take just a little bit, this is just 505 spray based. I don't need a lot, just a couple little dots. And a trick that we learned is rather than pushing and rubbing on 505, tap it down into place. I've kind of found if you start to push and rub, it actually releases a little bit. And so now that's stuck. And now I'm going to just do, and again, I don't need a lot. Okay. And that's going to take just a minute or two to dry, and that's going to nicely stay in place for me. And then, again, I can do whatever I want. I'm maybe going to, I could cut a strip off of here and put a strip of flour at each end. Okay, and I would use my rotary cutter for this. I'm not set up here to have a cutting mat. So I'm going to do this the easy way. I'm going to measure this and say, oh, I need about a quarter inch seam allowance. And now everybody's going to gasp. <laughs> oh my God, she tore that fabric. Look at that. That strip works. I'm going to press that. And then I'm going to do one on this side. Again, I want to include about my quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm going to press that one because they stretch a little bit when you do that, but that's okay. Just press them with best press. And I like that. That's going to be there. And then I'm going to take this. And this, I happen to know that I was going to make a 13 inch runner. So I cut this piece at about 13 inches. And I'm just going to open this up and measure this oh so technically. Again, I'm leaving myself about a quarter inch. And I'm not quite centered here, because as I said, I didn't mark my center. We're going to pretend that I did. So nice of you to pretend when I want you to pretend. I'll do this side a little bigger. Can you see okay, Tina, or am I best? Should I no. scoot over one way or another? You are okay? Great. All right, so here I am. Okay? And that's a cute little runner. Okay? So now I'm ready to sew. I've got my pieces cut or torn to size. Again, they don't have to be perfect. I could have made this a three inch strip. I can chop it off later because I know the end of this batting is the edge of my runner. So I'm going to set these aside. I'm going to go to my sewing machine, which I'm not going to do here. I'm going to put these right sides together and I'm going to sew through all my layers, through my backing, through my batting, and I'm going to sew at a quarter inch. And then I'm going to press this back. Okay. That's it. That's all there is to it. I'm going to take this piece, I'm going to lay it here, I'm going to stitch at that quarter inch, and that's going to be right here. I'm going to take this piece, put it face down, I'm going to stitch here, and pull that back. This piece, I'm just going to take it, sew right here, and flip that back. My runner is done. I'm ready to bind it. Okay? It's not difficult. That's how this was. A chunk of gray that was 11 inches wide, my two panels were 11 inches, and then I did a two and a half inch strip on either side. That's all there is to it. Here I quilted through the middle. Here I need a little bit of quilting, something in here, and a little bit in here. But it's all already anchored in place. I don't have to tack it, fuse it. I can just stitch because it's already quilted with my construction. And I'm ready to go. When I'm done with this, my stitching, I can go to my cutting board and I can take my ruler, lay along the edge of my batting, and just trim all the way around. Because I already started with that batting piece that was the size that I wanted. All right. Does that make sense to everybody? Tina, makes sense to you? It does. Thank any you. any questions popping up? No, ma'am. Okay, then I'm going to say, I'm going to show you a couple other things as well, but I'm going to play a little bit with this one. Those of you who know me know that I love applique. Um, I put a new class up 
a week or two ago on our Studio Y page called Introduction to Machine Applique. Um, it's 1999 for the class. It gives you our North of Plymouth trees quilt and it talks about how to stabilize, how to applique, all the basics. And I'm going to show you a quilt in a few minutes that was made by a, we'll call her a student, that's, she's, she's a, a quite accomplished student, although she's a beginner applicator. So on this, I decided this fabric would be pretty to make some flowers out of. I put Heat and Bond on the back. Heat and Bond is a fusible product. It is, one side is paper, one side is glue. I iron it to the back of my fabric and then I can cut out different shapes. And what I'm going to do is just make some flowers. Okay? The easiest way to do it is if I say I want my pattern petals to be about this wide. Okay? There is no magic. I can't draw to save my soul. I can cut out teardrop shapes relatively easily. I can either make them pointed or I can leave them kind of flat if I'm going to put something over the middle. Okay? So all I'm going to do is grab these and just cut that little end off and I'm going to just make some pointed ones. I'm going to come up to the end, curve around, and they're not perfect, but they're not bad. And when you see the next beautiful quilt I'm going to show you, you're going to say, Hers are all different shapes too. They don't have to be perfect. I'm just, just cutting here. They can be thick, they can be thin, they can be lopsided. Because if you look in your garden, all of your flowers are different sizes and shapes. All right. So I can peel off the paper off the back of these. And I don't have enough of these, but it's going to give you an idea. Peel these off. If you have trouble getting the paper off, take a pin and just score the paper and then you can bend it and the paper will peel right off. I prefer to have you watch me struggle while I'm doing this on, on camera. Alright, so here's my little flowers and I'm going to do a bunch of petals and I could cut vines. I can just, if I take a piece like this, I can just cut a vine. All I'm doing is cutting a curve. I'm just cutting a curve. And then I go back and I cut about a quarter inch width. Look in your garden, the vines are all different sizes. I can do whatever I want here. And if I come back and say, oh, this looks like a big old blob here really technical, I can come back and just cut a little bit more out and make it any shape I want. You can also find pictures and trace all of this, but I can put this little vine through the middle and then I can, I could have these be leaves if I did them in green or I could have blue leaves if I wanted to. I could have a little line and put a flower at each end. Fuse this down, applique around the edge, and I've got a cute little applique runner that took like a look, looks like, tooks like, looks like it took me a long time to make. So all I'm doing is just using applique shapes. So that's a really simple runner and I can do whatever I want with it. Now I'm going to throw all this out of my way and those of you who don't like applique and don't want to mess with applique and love to do piecing, I won't hold that against you, although applique is my favorite. I'm going to set these out of the way. Okay. And I'm going to go dig in my scrap box. And obviously, I wouldn't pick a gray back. But again, I would start with my um, batting, cut the size I want, mark my center line, both horizontal and vertical. And these are some blocks that we had a ruler class ages ago, and these were some leftover blocks. I can take these and use a little spritz of spray to hold that in place or pin it. And I can take the next block, face down, stitch through all my layers, flip it back, 
take this one, face down, stitch through all my layers, and I'm going to just lay them here. You can imagine that those seams are, are stitched. And here's my next one, and here's my next one. So face down, sew together. So now I have a nice little pieced runner, and I could add a border on either side. I could do all different stuff with this. I could line these up. I could do every other block. I could sew a strip on here, on each one, and do a different color here. And I would do that before I sewed them down. So I would say, okay, this space is, I'd measure it, and say, okay, I'm eight by five and a half. I'd take a five and a half inch piece of fabric. I'd sew one to this piece, one to this piece, one to this piece. So each of these pieces would have a solid block on them. I'd put my first one down. I'd take my next one face to face. Take my next one face to face. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? It's a real easy way just to create what I'm using to fill this space. I could take all of these and line them up along one edge. And I could take these and, I don't know, I could cut them in a diamond shape. That's pretty ugly, I wouldn't do that. But what can I do with them? I can do stripes, I can do a solid fabric, I can add multiple borders. If I had more of this fabric, I could just do a wide border of that and have it be asymmetrical. So all of these scrap pieces that you have can turn very easily into runners in a really simple process. The other one that I had, these again were from that ruler class, and these are, these are the lazy angle ruler, and it's all the different types of pieces that you can make. And what I did a few minutes ago is I just sewed a bunch of them into a row. And funny how they just fit. These are four inch blocks. I've got a 40 inch, four and a half inch blocks finished at four. I've got a 40 inch thing. So my eight inch blocks or four inch blocks fit perfectly divisibly into that 40 inch. So I could stitch that down the middle. Again, I could put it here. I've got a bunch more. I could do whatever I want. I could fill this space, say with, I don't know, a background, a different background fabric. And I could applique these on top look like they fell off the, I can do whatever I want, okay? I can add borders, I can add strips, I can add chunks to the end. It's very technical when you're talking sewing terms and you're talking about chunks. It is not complicated. You're just taking a piece and saying, what do I like? Hmm, I could put this here, but I have to pay attention to the way that I connect it because I have to cover my seams. So if I wanted this here, say I was going to put this piece in the middle, and I wanted to add, I don't know, some squares here. All I'm going to do, I'm going to sew these together first. I'm going to sew those six together. Once those six are sewn together, I'm going to put them face to face, stitch here, and open it out. And then I add the six on the other side. And then when I go to add this, I put this face down stitch across, and there's my really ugly finished runner, okay? So you can do whatever you want. All you're doing is filling in the space of whatever size batting that is. I hope that makes sense to everybody. It's really a simple process. Just play with it. Grab pieces and scraps that you have. I've got the little bit left over from that runner. I have this little bird here. He's kind of cute. I could put him in here, and I could take, I don't know, a little piece of black. Again, stitch it and flip it so it would fill that space. And then I can take my chunks of plaid and see how much fabric I have. I can fill that in. I can add red. I can chop this in half. I can do whatever I want. It doesn't always have to be a square and two borders a rectangle and two borders. Play with different pieces. Look at what you've got. I could take this and on a, on a runner, I don't always like my birds to be upside down. If I'm on one side of the table, they're upside down. If I'm on the other side, they're upside right. Um, I have one spot in my house where the buffet is against the wall. 
so I can have all the birds in one direction and they're all upside right when you look at it versus a table where you have people sitting on both sides. Um, so then I might take these and line up those birds. If I had those birds and thought, mm, I don't really want to do a runner, I can make this into a wall hanging and do it this way. And my birds are this way and everybody's upside right. This size runner or wall hanging is great for a doorway. Um, a lot of us have relatives and friends that are in nursing homes and they decorate their doors. This is the perfect size to put on your hallway outside door or in your room on the bathroom door. It's just a nice size to fill in that space. So that's what we have with runners today.